for that uh, our chief guest, Dr. Emma Shinwasan, to address uh, alumni. Professor Rodan Nasama, Dr. Atre, Mr. Japit, Vice Chancellor of the Bangalore Central University. Of course, we haven't uh, yet seen the Vice Chancellor of the uh, Bangalore University uh, here yet. Apparently, he may come a little later. Um, of course, we also haven't uh, seen the principal of the UVCE. Anyway, I think he may be here. Uh, let's hope we'll see him later. Uh, dear faculty members, uh, alumni, students, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, uh, this is a very historic and joyous day when our beloved University Vishwashira College of Engineering is observing the commencement of uh, its second century of existence. Of course, let's first uh, pay tribute to the vision dedication of all the persons over the years who built up this great institution, commencing, of course, from the founder, Dr. Saram Visheshwaraya, all the principals, faculty members, supporting staff who contributed to building our UVC uh, into a great institution. Uh, to them, we owe a debt of uh, gratitude uh, for all that uh, they have done in uh, preparing careers of such a large number of people who have contributed a great deal to the development of Karnataka, of India, and other parts of the world. So uh, to them, we owe a special uh, thanks on this occasion. Uh, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> it is appropriate that the alumni have thought of uh, this get-together to refresh our memories about the good times we had as students and the start in life that uh, many of us uh, have uh, got. Of course, in, uh, um, but uh, of course the uh, institution is really run by, uh, under the patronage of the state government and the university and so forth, it would have been nice if there was a function in which there had been full participation uh, of the university on such an important day. What is this possible that due to the flux in the affairs of the state, uh, such a function could not be held at this point. It may well, in fact, be held a little later. Uh, of course, uh, the alumni who are present here are only a small fraction of the very large number of alumni who have passed through this great institution. And uh, we all uh, recall the mentoring and the uh, preparation for life that we had through various distinguished faculty with whom we interacted. So for example, in my time, we recall Professor Narana Ingar, Professor Chandraswaya, amongst others, who inspired us uh, in many ways. And of course, all of you will recall similarly your own uh, mentors and professors. Now, the alumni can act as a catalyst to prod those responsible to run the UBC to take up the challenges of improvement and modernization. It's very clear that very substantial funds uh, will be required uh, uh, and that will have to come from the public exchequer. Alumni, of course, are keen to contribute to the extent of their capabilities, but for the near term, the landmark contribution will only be a supplementary uh, part and the large part will have to come from public funds. Of course, in course of time, business and industry leaders could also join in uh, contributing once the institution's credibility is enhanced. Now, I was told by uh, some of the alumni that some 50% of the students of this institution are from rural background, 
and these students consider UBC as the best engineering institution for them because of the low fees in spite of uh, various inadequacies that are there in the infrastructure. Many other engineering colleges in the state have stolen a march in terms of ranking. Even so, apparently, uh, MNC employees consider the learning and the dedication uh, amongst the students here uh, are uh, substantially uh, uh, are substantial and therefore they tend to uh, induct talent from this, school, this institution. This is a very good thing indeed. Now, modernization of infrastructure and planning for the future needs dynamic and effective leadership for a sustained period of time. And the institutions in front rank around the world achieve that position as a result of uh, long-term uh, planning and effective leadership. Now, it was mentioned in the initial remarks by, uh, uh, by, by the, uh, what are these early speakers, that this was the sixth uh, engineering institution uh, in India. Of course, some of the others were started much earlier, like Roorkee or Gindi or Pune or Jadavpur. But then if you take a look at their growth path and see where they are now, many have become uh, autonomous universities of uh, substantial standing with large infrastructure, many, many departments, high capability in research and development, consultancy and so forth. But at the same time, if we look back and see what has happened here, because UVC had a great start. It trained many, many good engineers who contributed to the building up of the economy of Karnataka, of India, and they also uh, have played a great role in other institutions around the world. But then, for uh, perhaps we have to say uh, collectively over a long period of time, uh, the people who are running the institution or managing the institution seem to have less than adequate vision for building for the future. There might have been other in, uh, limitations of money, land and space and so forth. So we now find the old institution has got a campus in town and then a campus in, uh, uh, in uh, out of town. The campus in town has the heritage building and other immediate facilities. Although some amount of money has been sanctioned for upgradation of this infrastructure, I think uh, uh, much of the newer additions will have to take place with substantial investments only in the new campus because the space constraints are really something that you cannot overcome in the uh, heart of the city. Now, you know, institutions grow great because of vision and ambition of the leadership for a long period of time. And uh, if we accept the proposition that uh, a low level survival is adequate, well then of course uh, that's the way we develop. And uh, without uh, my saying so, it seems to me that over a long period of time, uh, we have lost out in creating an institution that should have been uh, certainly one of the top institutions of India and even competing for a status around uh, uh, as a top institution around the world. Now we know that technology is moving so rapidly that uh, uh, great institutions are built with the efforts of large interdisciplinary people and with large investments of public money, private uh, uh, munificence as well as, of course, alumni contribution. Now, uh, uh, I don't believe that uh, as a result of various uh, structural problems, this institution has really gone out in trying to uh, enlist the support of important technology institutions of the country. Uh, I mean, I'm talking of uh, big institutions like Space Department, Atomic Energy, Defense, and so forth. So I think uh, this seems to have been a, a, an opportunity that should have been taken earlier, but hasn't happened. But I think at least from now on, uh, we need to look at uh, the f uh, future profile of the institution in a different way. How do we make this UVC a, a center for 
research and development in at least certain selected areas of technology where it will become over a period of time world class. How do you make this institution to be a, a center of specialized consultancy? Maybe you are doing some, but much more that is demanded in today's conditions. For example, when you are planning the metro rail system or you are planning uh, water management to the city or road management, traffic management, so many, many areas, uh, uh, really speaking in other parts of the world, similar institutions actually act as the repositories of uh, expertise which help all these major public projects, of course also projects in the private sector. Now I think we have to therefore keep in mind uh, the need for strong leadership amongst the, in the institution itself to begin with, that is amongst the, the principal, the, the heads of departments, the professors, and then big support from the uh, university authorities and the state government. Now in um, 2011, uh, there was another uh, uh, reunion of uh, alumni. Actually, it seems to be, have been much more uh, participated than this one, I see, because we had a large number of people, and we prepared uh, a, a vision document. And that had looked at this uh, past of the institution, the future trajectory, and how we must get there. And some of the recommendations uh, are worth recalling. The first one was that we, there was a need for a strong director to head the institution. Of course, over a period of time, some kind of a, 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 a fragmented leadership seems to have evolved. And this is historic, and uh, uh, events have allowed that situation of fragmented leadership to continue for a long period of time, and also seems to have, got, seems to have been sanctified as, as, as a, uh, accepted practice, which is a very unfortunate thing. If you compare all the other institutions that have done well, you will see that they've had a series of strong leaders who enjoyed the support of their own institution's internal strength and who also enjoyed substantial strength of outside uh, the institution, namely the state government, the university authorities, public at large, industry and so forth. Now that has to happen. Without such a thing happening, really the, the profile of the institution cannot uh, enhance. Secondly, we also said that there should be a governing council which would include some distinguished alumni, right? other educationists, Karnataka government representatives, industry leaders, to be set up and given adequate financial and administrative powers. This is a central point of our recommendation. Uh, now, uh, the UVC should be enabled to continue to supply high quality technical manpower for underpinning the development and growth of Karnataka and in India in many new and emerging areas. Now, all these things we had suggested, and then we also met uh, the chief minister of the time, the higher education minister and so forth. But uh, while of course there are some broad general, um, shall we say, sharing of uh, the hope that things will change, I think things have actually continued pretty much as they were. And then of course some element of uh, new complexities have arisen as a result of trifurcation of the university, uh, of Bang all the old Bangalore University, into three parts and uh, in fact some degree of uncertainty was there as to where exactly the UVC will itself get located. Now all these things of course cannot be allowed to continue because uh, they are not going to enable the institution to prepare itself for the next 200 years, uh, next 100 years and beyond. So I think we, the alumni can act as a stimulus in some ways, as we tried to do even after the reunion of 2011. But we require a receptive state-level uh, leadership at the level of the minister, chief minister, minister, and uh, other uh, the, 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 the secretariat and so forth, and the university authorities, to really get committed for the long-term future. Now, long-term future can be bright, if we sow the seeds of uh, uh, growth, 
now and if, if we have done, not done adequately in the past, well then we can't cry over it, but at least we must do it for the future. And, and if we don't do that, then I think uh, uh, all of us will probably be sorry that uh, a great institution with a great potential, we've all not nurtured it adequately. So this is not going to be a good thing. So I'd like to end on the note that we would wish the UVC, its faculty, students, alumni, as also the authorities, university and state government, all the best in their efforts to revive. I hope they will start a revival process and restore the glory of the UVC and it's acquiring its due place amongst the great engineering institutions of India it once enjoyed for many years in the past. It's my sincere wish that this two-day event um, uh, will set in motion a process of change in building a new and renovating UVC. And we must, of course, remember, must concentrate on research and development, we must uh, concentrate on capacity building for consultancy, uh, and that's the only way in which the university can be kept alive. Of course, teaching is very important, no question about that. That is a bedrock. But beyond teaching, we have to really have strong programs of research and development, strong programs of consultancy, and, and involvement in the state level and national level projects which are there, and when lately lots of funding is going. Of course, if we demonstrate our capabilities, that we, we, are, we have got the right uh, talent to help them out, all these big project people certainly come to us, and they also will participate in enhancing the availability of funds and investments for yeah, further expansion. So there's a lot that needs to be done, uh, and uh, the, it's a good thing that alumni have taken some initiative, but I think we need to take uh, a continuing initiative uh, along with the authorities of the state and the university to, to kind of get a destination which all of us hope uh, would be the kind of destination that some of the other institutions which were started uh, around the same time as us or a little earlier, they have been able to reach. I think we must keep that kind of uh, uh, vision for the future. I hope uh, we'll succeed in time to start a process in that direction. Thank you. Very introspective speech and words of wisdom.